the cutest of corvids. Crow doesn't think so. Jackdaws are messing with his wheat. They tend to snap the ears off and take him away. Sim Hay visits a lovely new rifle range and finds out how to bore sight a rifle. That's the one I put in first of all. <laughs> There is news, there is hunting YouTube, plus there's a chance to win a Flightline Decoys Auto Riser. And everyone needs an Auto Riser in their life. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Before becoming a farmer, Andy worked in the fashion houses of Milan and Paris. That's why on one of the hottest days of the year we find him skillfully chopping the arms off his Jack Pike top. If I do it in an angle it'll look better on my shoulder, won't it? Yeah. Amazingly he has shown that? atom level That's accuracy. That is cool, isn't it? By the way, Jack might do do short sleeve ones. <laughs> Dressed for success, we quickly understand why he is here. There are hundreds of jackdaws on this wheat. For many pest controllers, this small member of the crow family gets a get out of jail free card. But crow is of a different mindset. They are destructive. It's quite a sorry looking field though, crow, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, we had um, a lot of rain two weeks ago. We've got about 70 acres gone flat. We've got some worse than this. Um, but the jackdaws have honed in on this bit. Uh, that's the wood they usually roost in. It's not air wood, but that's why they usually roost. And of course, coming out of roost, odd ones have just dropped on here and it's just built up. There's probably a thousand jackdaws there has been here. They're starting to do a bit of damage. Uh, today's really the first day that I can get out. It's the hottest day of the year so far. and It's going to be a bit warm, but you can see the damage they're doing. Uh, this is a perfect jackdaw thing. They tend to, you got all these, look, they snap the ears off. They tend to snap the ears off and take them away and go and sit in a tree and eat them. But you can see on the heads that they've started picking the grains out. See the grains, they've been picking the grains out. They might just clear off. They've got so many, they've got a fair acres to go on, but we might get an area, we might shoot a few. It's a nice flat bit here. Tuck back in there in the shade and um, give them a bit of a G up. But uh, Years ago, there never used to be the numbers there is now. But um, in the winter, there's up to 5,000 jackdaws roosting there in that wood. It's not air wood, but we do get on the edge of it and shoot a few. But, but the thing is, the youngsters have just come off their nest. Of course, mum, mum, dad brought them all out here onto my crop. So, but they, hopefully, we get some silly ones coming nicely. But, but otherwise, they might just like they have now. There's a load back in the trees. That's the youngsters. Um, but hopefully, they they move about. There's quite a nice flight line through here. So. It actually smells of, of corvids here. It, it absolutely stinks of jackdaws, they smell anyway, so it does absolutely smell of jackdaws. It's the noise they make as well, they, when they're, they're feeding they just don't stop chattering and that, that attracts their mates here. To help matters today, we have some UK shoot warehouse decoys. They show up well in the Pulsar Helion Thermal Spotter, which we have on loan at the moment. We have used Thermal before and it offers a different view on the situation. Here's a hot crow and Rosa tending to the pattern. Crows tend to feed a bit closer. Well, like you say, you see all that lot in here. How many jackdaws are here and in this little hole, sir. So I'll just put a load of decoys out. I've got some Scylla socks and just some normal full body. Ones that I've got from the UK Shoot Warehouse, so they're good decoys. Just make sure they're flock coated. Everyone knows what crows are like, they're pretty clever. The fear is always that these clever birds will soon find some other flat patches of wheat, but we do get some shooting. 
and he shows restraint by letting pigeons pass as we are here for the jackdaws, but he weakens and folds a couple of times. Over the past few months, we may have suggested that an Andy Crow game bore shell was in the mix. So we bring up the C word. Corn. Cartridge. Cartridge. Where are we off to tomorrow? Game bore. What are we going to go there for? Look at my new cartridges. Yeah, so look they're at them. They are coming. Yeah, they're, they're starting to push them out a bit now. Apparently they're coming off the production line, so we're off up to have a look at them. And, uh, Fill the car up with a few. So, uh, no, quite looking forward to it. Be interesting to have a look around the, the factory as well. See the shot tower and everything. So, you never seen anything like that before? No, I haven't. So it's all all new to me. So, I can't wait to get out and have a look around. Really. As the temperature hits 30 degrees, the hide offers some welcome shade. It's hard work. We can hear and see the birds feeding at the opposite end of the field, drawing other birds away from us. We need more guns on deck. Like I said, when we got here, they've got so much ground to... They've got big acreage to feed on. Um, being the first time at them, I thought we'd, we'd pick a few up a bit quick, but... Um, they're just dropping down the other end. They keep coming past, but... Old ones keep coming past. In range. It's definitely seeing you, David. Because I ain't seeing me. We've shot about 20 jackdaws and 10 pigeons. Not a big bag, but a fun afternoon all the same. It's worthwhile exercise, Andy? It's been worthwhile. Shot a few pigeons and a, uh, we could have shot quite a lot of pigeons if we concentrated on pigeons, but I was really here just to have a go at the jackies. So uh, we shot a few of them, it was quite nice. Bit of fun for a couple of hours. And you're looking cool with your Stella McCartney top. Yeah, you like that, don't you? You can either have it with the, the rolled up or the straight side to it. All rolled up. I prefer the rolled up. So with a few weeks before this crop is off, it looks like Andy will be back making some noise to put off any species wanting a chew on his ears. Thank you, Andy. And some of you have already seen on Facebook that we have filmed Andy at the Game Boar factory in Hull watching those first clear pigeons coming off the production line. And we're going to be running that film in advance of the launch of those cartridges at the Game Fair 2017, where Andy will be appearing alongside me in the Game Fair Theatre, and he'll be talking about pigeons, not just cartridges. He does love a crowd. Now, someone else who's no slouch in getting the flock out of here, it's David with the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Andy Crow is the UK's top pigeon shot. Don't know. That's Let's the conclusion see. of The Field magazine, which has published its popular top 10 lists of various kinds of shooters. Among other Field Sports Channel regulars who make the list, Richard Fold, Simon Ward, Rob Fennick and Mark Windsor are among the all-rounders. Rachel Carey and Cheryl Hall make the ladies' shots. Who would you like to see on the list? Leave a comment below. A farmer has told dog walkers to mind their own business after armed police were called to his premises. A dog walker saw rabbit shooters on a Surrey farm and called an armed response from the police. The dog walker also caused a nearby primary school to be locked down. The farm is well known locally for hosting the monthly Lee Mill clay shoot. Police discovered that the shots were legally fired from a lawfully owned gun on private land. Farmer Paul Lovell told the Surrey Mirror newspaper that the situation seemed a bit excessive. Can you call a fox, blow a hunting horn or call a duck? Then you should take part in competitions at this year's Game Fair. Each competition will be held over half an hour every day from the 28th to the 30th of July at the Game Fair at Hatfield House, Hertfordshire. For more on the competitions go to bit.ly forward slash GFT comps. The EU is threatening to end all overseas hunting by banning the import of all trophies. In a lightning move, Germany wants the import of non-threatened CITES species trophies banned, and the EU is currently debating Germany's proposal. To find out who you can lobby to stop this, go to bit.ly lobby CITES. Antis are furious that a major African conservation project is being backed by big game hunters. 
Sango Wildlife Conservancy in Zimbabwe has donated 6,000 wild animals, including elephants, to repopulate the Zanavi National Park in Mozambique. It is one of the largest relocation projects of wild animals that Africa has seen and will take place over the next three years. Old female elk are learning to give stalkers the slip. Research published in New Scientist magazine shows that once female elk reach 10 years old, they become almost immune to hunting. Researchers tagged 49 female elk in Western Canada with GPS collars and tracked them for six years to look at survival rates. And finally, a harpoon gun similar to that used in the Jaws movie is up for auction. Built by Webley and Scott and using a special .38 caliber Kynock blank, the Mark II WW Greener Martini style action rifle could rocket a light harpoon into a mechanical shark thrashing around Amity Island. Estimated price is between $3,000 and $4,250. You may need a bigger boat. You are now up to date with Phil Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now with the crops as high as an elephant's eye in the Northern Hemisphere, now is the right time to offer the new Flightline's decoy auto riser, the AR1, as a competition prize. Pay attention to the rules. The AR1 is designed to mimic a pigeon trying to land in a standing crop. It can be set up in under a minute and its faster motor delivers a rapid wing beat to attract passing birds. It also comes with a one-year warranty. To enter, just write Flightline Decoys in the comments below or on the competition page on Facebook. We will draw the winner in the next couple of weeks. Nick from Flightline says he can deliver the prize anywhere in the world, so even you funny upside down southern hemisphere lot can enter. Right, I first met Sim Hay when he was gillying in Ireland. Well, he's back home in Hampshire now and he's taken up rifle shooting. So what better idea than to head off to a rifle range that has a story of its own to tell and to find out about boar sighting. I've come to Brace's Range just south of Bristol where they're holding a free range day in July. Dan Too from Brace's is going to show me around the range and help me zero in a rifle. Ball sighting is no science to it really, you just kind yeah. of got to eye it up as best you can. Um, so we use a nice big surface area so that we can find where our hole is. Might be a bit naive here, why boar sighting? Why is it called boar sighting when we're zeroing? Okay, so what we'll be doing is we'll be looking down the bore of the rifle, so down through the actual barrel of the rifle itself. Yeah and then coming up and looking down the scope mm -hmm. so that what we're trying to do is we're trying to mirror the picture really so that yeah. what we see down through our ball is what we're looking at through our scope okay. um, and that should hopefully get us within the sort of metre square of the, of the card yeah. at sort of 50 yards and then once we're there we know that when we go down to the 100 yard or 100 metre okay. we're going to won't be wasting too much ammunition so I'll grab a couple of bits and pieces from the container Excellent. The uh, target is a one meter square piece of bit of cardboard at okay, 50 yards. Hopefully, I'll be able to bore sight it. So when we look through the bore, that's going to give us a real nice, easy visual to sort of to focus in on. I've done it a few times now. That's about the same size as the the, the bore through the rifle that we're looking at at this sort of distance. Yeah, when you've got to take a shot on an animal, the side of the animal, what does this target relate to the size of the animal, the size of the, sort of the, 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 the rib cage of the, of the beast that you're shooting? The kill zone depends obviously on the beast that you're shooting. Yeah. Anywhere certainly within this 10 circle um, in the engine room, it's heart and lungs, would be acceptable. But the kit that we're using today, the Sour, we've put them all through that red, red circle there. No pressure. No pressure for you, no pressure at all. <laughs> <laughs> Rifle nice and stable, pointing at the target. And then all we're going to do is come down and just gently move the rifle so as you look straight down the bore, you can see the center of the target lined up in the center of the bore. Well, you need to, you need to go up just even more so. Yeah. yeah, and so now onto the windage. 
Okay, we need to go to the left. Oh, the right left. Uh, hold on. No, that's the wrong left. The other left. Yeah. It does seem to be moving around a bit. Is that? I don't know if it's the the. Yeah. So just check the bore again. Uh, to to the right now. And a little bit more. I wouldn't worry too much. Where that's looking now, we're yeah. slightly high and we're just a little bit off to the left. Yeah. Um, so I think now's a good time to put a round down there and see where it goes. My first shot will be sort of close to the target center. Yep. We'll make the adjustment that we need to make on the scope and then yep. the second shot will be slap bang in the middle. Will it now? <laughs> but we can hope. That's, the, that's what we're trying to aim for. So what we do now, 100 meters, which is our target down at the bottom there by the, the earthworks. So we're just going to switch around onto that target. Okay. I'm hoping, I can't see it with my naked eye, but there should be a little black circle inside of that red circle down the bottom. Can you see that? Yeah. So I inhale and then exhale and I inhale and then I exhale. If you, if you do a couple of deep breaths, you'll see the gun will rise up and down with your breaths, yeah? As you exhale, when you get to the bottom of that breath, that's when I would squeeze the trigger. It's nice and gentle, everything's nice and still. So as I inhale, that, that crosshair comes up slightly. Yeah. And then as I exhale, it comes back down and you'll see then, it'll be nice and stable at the bottom of that breath. And that's when uh, sort of I would squeeze the trigger. That is normally breathing that causes something like that to happen. And left to right is normally trigger control. So we are, what do you reckon? Eight centimeters low. Yeah. Um, and maybe we could come across a centimeter to the right. So what we'll do, one click on that scope is a centimeter at 100 meters, which is where we're at now. So we'll give it eight clicks up and one click to the right. Okay. We're just gonna put another shot down there to confirm that we're in that center of the target. Um, so when you're ready, Here we go. Yeah, okay. yeah so you'll probably do it looking at me. <laughs> I think you clicked it just before you, uh, <laughs> before you, before you sound the rifle. Yeah, that's, that's the one I put in first of all. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have another go, please? Absolutely, yeah. 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 For the big open day, we've got uh, the rifle range, which uh, Andrew Venables is coming down from WMS Firearms to help run. We're going to have the running bore target on the day uh, with Tomo Svetic from Artemis Hunting, he's going to be helping out there. We're going to have the Blaza clothing range, the Blaza shotguns and the Blaza rifles with the Sauer rifles and the Mauser rifles all on display and the ability to actually demonstrate and try them out. So far the, the internet sign-ups have been good, uh, we're looking at you know sort of a couple hundred people per day uh, ideally, is that that's where we would, uh, we'd like to see so that's what we would like. It won't cost you a thing. So yeah, the ammunition is free. Um, obviously there will be catering on site, which drinks and food, etc. that's all additional. But the ammunition is free, and we do clay shooting here. Braces and, and, and Blaza Sporting UK have sort of come together to sort of offer the ammunition for both the shotgun and for the rifles with RWS. We worked really hard uh, this last year to get the range up and together and signed off and approved so that we can actually use use the equipment on the range. So uh, we're really lucky, we're really fortunate to be able to offer the facility to be able to be used in the way it is. Yeah, we're just uh, just reshoring and putting a bit more mud on the uh, on the earthworks this, this afternoon. So. Yeah, because Sim took quite a lot of your mud away, didn't he? He did, yeah, and a couple of sandbags. So <laughs> we shall be replacing those before the weekend. I've learnt a lot and so can you. On the 22nd and 23rd of July, braces are holding a free range day for more, go to bit.ly slash braces day. You just need an open FAC and it's free. Yes. Thank you, Sim. Thank you, Dan, too. And I am looking forward to that event, which we will be filming. Now from ranges to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube.
This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Lots on wild boar and feral hogs this week. There is calling hogs in Texas with Byron South and Kendall Jones. Who knew you could call them in? Comments below. I have to put this in by Philu Hunting from France because of his amazingly serendipitous camera placement. It's a roundup of two wild boar driven hunts in the Vosges from last season. And here is an American feral hog film with a difference. Chad Mendes and Abby are stalking in on a wild boar when they spot competition in the long grass, also with boar on its mind. The duck season in the Australian state of Victoria is now over and it was sensational, says Gretchy, who puts out this film from the last couple of days of it. And in this film, big groups of mallards, a group of college students from central Arkansas in the USA are out on public land whooping it up. Back in the UK, Mike McQuinton of MCQ Bushcraft is out after pigeons in a measured film in windy conditions. He has a big following from his bushcraft courses, as well as his innate star quality. Waffenland TV from Germany is enjoying the deer that enjoy the lush pastures of Slovenia. This is a roebuck hunt from June. And finally, this is one of the top hunting films from North Africa this week. He is flying his bird in the desert on I am not quite sure what, stone curlew or heaven for fender, Ubara Bustard. That's it for this week. I have put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the link or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that is it for this week. Don't forget to enter the flight line decoys competition for the Auto Riser. Competition entries close at the end of June. Plus, you can also sign up for the Braces Day at bit.ly slash Braces Day. And why not go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, or pop your email address into our constant contact form on our register page, and we'll contact you about this show and our other shows. This show out 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday, and this has been this show. Field Sports Britain, good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. <laughs>